Hey guys, Angelo here from Red Shifters, also known as Demi Wolf. And today I'm going to guide you through a build video for the Isotope 85 by Red Shifters. The ISO 85 is a 2 inch ducted inverted frame, meaning pusher style, that has two variants actually. Uh, we have a 14 millimeter variant, we also have a 19 slash 20 millimeter edition that will be able to mount your 19 millimeter HD cams as well as for these purposes we're going to be using a Cadex Vista unit. So that includes the 20 millimeter DJI FPV cam and your Vista that you'll be mounting in the back right over here. So this frame, just a little bit more about this frame, it is what we call inverted meaning pusher style with upside down motors and it will be able to house your two inch props of your choice. Today we're going to be using the Avon Micros two inch from Emacs and you have your Vista Bay in the back but also notice that we do have a 20 by 20 millimeter mounting deck back here in the ISO 85 and also this features our new X-Lock Roflex which is attached by this bottom X here and note that you'll be able to change the orientation of your battery strap of this uh, Roflex using these screws here. All you gotta do is unscrew it. We'll get to that. We're gonna unscrew it. You'll be able to rotate your battery bay, thus allowing your batteries to mount forward and back or horizontally left and right, depending on what setup you'll be running. And uh, I'll show you how that works in a minute. Note that you can also mount three screw motors or four screw motors. Uh, in the multi-pattern that is designed by Redshifters. Today we're going to be using these 1204 motors, 5000 kV from Beta FPV, and the iFlight Sussex D Toothpick F4 24S AIO Whoop Flight Controller because we're going to be using DJI and this Crossfire Nano with this Mini Mortal Antenna from FPV Cycle. So that will be our build today. At the end of all of this, we're going to plop on the Red Shifters Red GoPod, which is Red Shifters' answer to the naked GoPro movement that is uh, hitting the scene whoop scene. So that's going to be pretty cool. We'll plop this on top right at the end of the build there. And just a little bit more about this. It houses the GoPro 6 and 7 motherboard and designed to implement the Beta FPV BEC, which you can see the buttons right there, and your JSD connector, and it also is compatible with a DJI Mavic 2 Zoom ND filter. So we went with this this one from Moment, and because of course it's red shifters, we want to keep it red. We like that. So let's get started. We're going to start by unscrewing the fuselage. Let's unscrew the fuselage using these screws up, up here on top. Three of them are identical. They're going to be the washer heads. And then you have the, the standard screw here in the center. So you don't have to unscrew it all the way, just enough to stop biting the frame. We're going to plop it off and set it aside. And yes, we're going to be using this micro Phillips screwdriver here. And down the line, we're also going to be using the M2 tip for our motors and other components like the camera and all that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish unscrewing this so we can set it aside. Great. We won't need that till later. And do notice that these screws are here, ready for you to unscrew. Uh, these are very um, small screws, so make sure you have the right size as to not strip it. But yes, you will have options to try the X, the bottom X, in different orientations. We're gonna unscrew this bottom X here so that we can give, so that it will give us some access from the bottom of the frame once we start soldering things onto the flight controller. We'll set this aside as well. Notice that your ISO 85 frame kit will also come with these four grommets already installed, pre-assembled for you. You might want to pop those off depending on what FC you have. You can keep them on and just plop on the FC of your choice. 
Uh, here's the flight controller. Uh, I already went ahead and plopped on the grommets into the flight controller. And the best way to feed this in is actually to take two of the soft mounts and slide them in. I'm going to start with the top and the left, the front and the left. And once you slide those in, you'll be able to pull them over and use the flex of the frame to kind of move this aside. We're going to start with this one over here at the back of the frame. Be very gentle. There is some flex in the frame, but with FCs like this, with the fully enclosed M2 mounts, you'll have to do some kind of playing around to get it to fit. But again, be very careful what you flex and you do it just a little at a time. Great. Sounded a little freaky, but we're okay here. Awesome. I already went ahead and soldered the XT30 onto the frame here. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and mount our motors so that we can solder those on. That's all four motors. We're gonna go ahead and snip away the motor JSD, the connectors at the end here, because we don't have motor mounts. So we'll snip those clean and start the soldering process. Gonna fire up the soldering iron here. Just be careful when you're soldering next to the frame here. We just finished soldering on the motors. Yeah, let's take care of the RX next. I'm gonna go ahead and use the wires from this harness to install our Crossfire RX here. We have ground all the way to the right here. Then we have the five volt then we have channel one, which is going to be wired into R1. Then we have our T1, channel two. All right, next up, let's take care of the Vista module. So I'm gonna start with my DJI camera here. We're gonna look for which way is up, and we're gonna go ahead and slide this in to our camera. I'll go ahead and go under the FC and through the back this way, through this back hole. Once you feed it through there, you'll be able to lock the camera in place. Um, we're gonna go with the top screw holes here from the DJI camera. So I'm just using this path through the ducts to give me access to these camera screws. Find your angle, just kind of where you want it to be. You could probably refine this later. You can slide it forward and back as needed and whatever angle you want. It goes pretty high actually. Next up, we're gonna go with the Vista module. You're gonna wanna pre-solder these wires included with the Vista. And we're going to attach the camera, and I also already wrapped the TPU antenna holder around the shaft of this Cadex antenna. And we're going to feed the wires pointing towards the back. And I'm gonna have the USB-C port facing down towards the bottom of the aircraft. I'm gonna feed the M2 screw through one of the corner holes here for the Vista unit. Right there. After you insert the M2 screw here, you can actually just pry these pegs slightly apart, allowing you a little bit more access to this connecting point here. After you attach the camera, you can slide it back into the pegs and you'll see that it fits there pretty snugly. Camera is ready to go. You can actually uh, fold it in for travel or flip it out when you're ready to fly. So we have VBAT power on the Vista. RX from the Vista module will go to the TX pad and vice versa. All right, so we just have one more thing to solder. 16 volt capacitor here. The uh, shorter leg is the ground. Here, let me just find a place here on the flight controller. It's gonna be right at the battery lead. Great, capacitor is done. 
Just plug this in and our crossfire is ready to go. We'll do some stuff on beta flight and this should be ready to fly in no time. I'm gonna go ahead and just put my crossfire receiver in the bottom here. As long as it's not squished against the flight controller, we should be good. And I'm going to remount this bottom X with the X-Lock Roflex in toilet tank position. So I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees from how you would receive it. Screw these guys back in. She's coming along quite nicely. Before we plop on this fuselage, we are going to solder on our GoPod using this harness that comes included with the BEC from Beta FPV. And we're gonna ask one more favor from the VBAT here, because we got a lot of wires running straight from the battery source, from the power source here. Let's go ahead and borrow this LED pad here for the pineo function on the GoPod, on the BEC. We're gonna be able to start and stop recording using a command from our transmitter. We can plop on our fuselage. I'm gonna go ahead and pop out these washer screws. You'll see why. And as for the GoPod, best way to install this guy is starting with the front. So after you eliminate the hinge screw from the ISO 85, you're going to use this 10 millimeter screw that comes with the GoPod. You also have choices of two holes here to be able to choose however you want, whatever works best with your build. But for the ISO 85, we're gonna use the furthest to the front, furthest to the tip, the one closest to the tip here, so that when you flip it this way, you'll be able to insert it through the hinge. In this case, it's not a hinge for us, but our other Red Whoop models, they do serve as a hinge to adjust your camera angle. So the way to mount the rest of the GoPod legs onto your ISO 85 is to feed the washer screw through the bottom of the TPU plate, which is the base of your GoPod. You can just feed it through here. So you can prime it for insertion here. These washer screws are really gonna help not allow your GoPod to rotate any which way, especially during flight, but these TPU legs are also soft and are just built into the GoPod. So after you have pre-inserted the washer screws in, I'm gonna start with the one in the back. All you have to do is fold the TPU leg this way and then feed it to the fuselage. Once you're there, you screw it in. I like to go with the front and then the back and then the side legs, right? And then once you get to the bottom, just make sure you hold onto these legs so you don't allow it to twist at the very last moment because there's going to be some friction using the washer head, which will be locked in by the washer head so that you have a straight go pod. There's definitely room for the capacitor here and also the mini mortal antenna. And then let's take care of the props. I'm going props out for this one, you guys. Just remember when you mount pusher props to make sure that the blades are still upright to the position they need to be. And we chose the Emacs Avon Micros. So that about sums up our build video here for the ISO 85, complete with the GoPod attachment on top. And let's weigh this little guy. This will tell us a lot of what we need to know. Should have weighed this before I put the GoPod on, but with everything, it's 124 grams. Pretty amazing for a GoPro 6 and a Caddx Vista with the original DJI camera here. And with the battery, I like to fly these 3S, 650 milliamp hour tattoo batteries. That brings us up to 180 grams. 3S is plenty. I know we love 4S for these types of guys, so do whatever you want. But here's your sub 50 two inch DJI ready pusher frame kit with a naked GoPro on top. This should be pretty impressive. 
happy flying. <laughs>